Irving Discovery downtown. Jonathan Cotto details what we know about a body found floating along the San Antonio Riverwalk. Plus, a terrifying night for a woman attacked by a masked gunman overnight. The search for that suspect still on this afternoon. Live from KSA 12, the news at noon starts right now. We begin this noon with a disturbing discovery along the San Antonio Riverwalk. Now, San Antonio police and the medical examiner are left with a lot of questions. Jonathan Cotto was there this morning as they were called to take the body out of a popular tourist attraction, and he has those details for us. All right, so right now we know it was a little after three this morning. San Antonio Park Police were actually called out to that 1800 block. I believe it was Commerce and St. Mary's in that area. And we're told that it was actually a passerby that found this body. Now we do expect to hear a lot more from Jonathan Cotto throughout this show. So stay with us as more information is expected to come online and on air. And a terrifying night for a woman leaving a Southside bar overnight when she says a masked gunman shot her. She says she was leaving the R&J Saloon in the 4900 block of South Flores Street around 315 this morning. As she walked to her car, a man dressed in all black and wearing a mask walked up to her and fired several shots. She was grazed on her hand and was able to call for help. A gunman is still on the run this noon. I told my husband, was that fireworks? He goes, no, that was a gun. There was some gunshots. And speaking of gunfire, neighbors still shaken up after a family barbecue turned deadly over the weekend. San Antonio police still searching for the suspects behind a drive-by shooting that ended with two people dead and five others in the hospital. This happened just after 10 o'clock Saturday night. This is the 2500 block of Patron Drive. That's on the city's southwest side. Chief William McManus says someone drove by the barbecue, fired 20 to 30 rounds. The chief says this is the second time that this home was targeted in just the last two months. Not safe anywhere, you know, not even at church, not even at school. So it's getting bad. It's getting worse. Police say 15 minutes later, another drive-by sh drive shooting was reported less than two miles away on South Zarzamora. In that shooting, no injuries reported. Meanwhile, across the nation, a continued surge in gun violence over the weekend with deadly gunfire erupting in Washington, D.C. at a Juneteenth festival. And in New York, nine people shot, one of them shot and killed in Harlem at a gathering. As ABC's Arena Roy explains, all of this is happening as a bipartisan group of senators continue working on the final text of a bill on gun reform right there on Capitol Hill. Panic erupting in the nation's capital when gunfire broke out at a packed Juneteenth concert and festival. Uh -oh. No, that is straight up gunshots. Police say the unauthorized event was being shut down after a series of fights and issues with the massive crowd, but around 8.30 in the evening, a gunman began firing. Police say a 15-year-old was killed and three others were injured, including a police officer. With uh, guns involved, and with our police managing a crowd on site, somebody used a gun and a child is dead. Other people hurt after being trampled while trying to leave the area. <laughs> Officials say multiple guns were recovered, but the suspect and the gun used in the shooting, nowhere to be found. And in New York City's Harlem neighborhood, nine people shot at a gathering. The victim's ages range from 42 to 21, a 21-year-old man dying from his gunshot wounds, according to police. So far, nobody has been arrested. The reality is something has to give. The lawmakers, the gun makers, law enforcement, and the community themselves. Everyone has to be accountable, right? And if we all are accountable to ourselves, we can sleep at night. All of this as a bipartisan group of 20 senators continue their negotiations on gun reform, working to turn a framework of provisions into law. Though senators are working on drafting a number of proposals, including strengthened background checks, restrictions for convicted abusers, school security, and mental health programs. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, more disturbing new information in the Uvalde school massacre. Surveillance footage and a source tell ABC News police waited in the hallways of Rom Elementary School for more than an hour before going into the classroom where gunmen had kids trapped. 
The news was first reported in the San Antonio Express newspaper, where the source also says the gunman wouldn't have been able to lock the doors from the inside. And because of a malfunction in the automatic lock system, the door might have been unlocked the whole time. But the surveillance footage shows that none of the officers in the hall tr checked or tried to unlock any doors before getting the correct key. This new information comes amid a closed door hearing in Uvalde. Last week, it was not clear whether the Uvalde CISD police or the Uvalde City Police would participate. But today, two Uvalde PD officers, one officer with the district police and one DPS state trooper are expected to testify. Today marks six months that four-year-old Lena Keel was last seen, and the community is not giving up hope of finding her. Lena last seen December 20th. She was playing at the playground in her apartment complex right off of Fredericksburg Road. Now, crews have searched the nearby Greenway dive teams, even searching nearby water. Still, six months later, no sign of her. Today, her family holding a service at the Muslim Children's Education Center to pray for Lena's safe return. That is happening this evening, 830 at 5281 Casabella. And of course, they are still searching and asking for any help. The reward for information leading to Lena's safe return or an arrest now sits at $250,000. If you have any information, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers or San Antonio Police. While the road might be a little slower with people at home for the holiday, there are still some closures to be aware of. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos shows us some of those trouble spots. We are getting closer to the end of June, but the work around the Alamo City is not over yet. Let's go ahead and get a look at what you could expect over here off I-10 over on the east side of Bear County. Debris removal is taking place there following the demolition of the bridge. We do see this starting on Monday, June 20th, wrapping on Friday, June 24th. And now this will start around 9 in the morning, last until 3 of the afternoon. Now drivers during that time, you can expect alternating right lane northbound and southbound loop 1604 closures right there at the I-10 intersection. Let's take a drive over there to 410 over on the west side of San Antonio, where we continue to see drainage work taking place. This again starts Monday, June 20th, should be wrapping up though on Monday, July 4th. So we have a ways to go before that finishes. But keep in mind, it starts at 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. During that time, drivers can expect a full closure of the southbound to northbound turnaround right there at Gulebita Road. One last look here at Loop 410, this time over on the southwest side, where we see barrier work taking place. Again, starts Monday, June 20th. 20th last until Friday, June 24th. It begins at 9 in the evening and start ends at 5 in the morning. So keep in mind during that time, single northbound main lane closures at Old Pearsall Road to Ray Ellison Boulevard. And of course, for the latest on closures taking place in your area, grab those phones, scan this QR code by tapping the center of your screen. That will have a list of closures taking place in your area and of course anything else that could impact your drive time. Today is World Refugee Day still ahead. How one organization and the Archdiocese of San Antonio are coming together to help our local Afghan community. And the NBA season is officially over. The Warriors crowned NBA champs. So what comes next? The NBA draft. We're going to prepare you right there. With the Spurs. What can we expect? We're going to explain in just a bit. Welcome back. Port San Antonio has grown exponentially over the last few years and it continues to grow. Now the port releasing new details on amazing innovative projects in the works right now. now those projects include a research complex for lunar and space research, a multi-story office building and a vertiport launching pad for an electric aircraft. Tiffany Huertas has a look at how local businesses could get more involved. We are on the verge of some amazing things as a civilization. The president and CEO of Port San Antonio, Jim Pershbach, says they've added over 5,000 jobs over the past four years. And we think we're going to keep accelerating that growth. The Tech Port Center and Arena is one of the latest projects showing the port's growth. Now, the growing technology hub has three projects that could create opportunities for small businesses across the region. It's a new office building because, frankly, we're out of space down here. A vertiport, which is really exciting, that's for electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, which are going to revolutionize transportation. And then a research building, particularly for lunar and space research, robotics, autonomous vehicles, and supervised autonomy. So we're excited about all this. The goal is to have the groundbreaking for these projects next year and completed by 2025. The port has partnered with the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and this summer, 
Workshops will be held so people can learn more about how to do business with the port. And it is a bidding process, but we know that as we, if we can get our members and others ready to do business, that means that our, the port has more options to choose from and hopefully can keep some of that enterprise local and gets, keep some of those dollars here in San Antonio. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And the upcoming workshops will be held at the port's headquarters. That is 907 Billy Mitchell Boulevard. Next one, June 27th, 4 to 530. Admission is free of charge to any interested business. For a link to pre-register and details, just head to ksat.com. It's World Refugee Day, and the organization Room to Read says it's committed to increasing literacy in traditionally underserved communities. Today, they'll be distributing a special collection of books to immigrant and refugee Afghan children that have resettled in the U.S. They'll be giving out over 5,000 books here in San Antonio and across our great state of Texas. The organization did a study to see what some of the biggest challenges the refugee community was facing here in the U.S. They found that children in certain parts of town weren't getting access to the books they needed. One of the things that's that's really important to Room to Read's work is making sure that children have access to books that are meaningful and relevant to them, that reflect their experiences, um, help create uh, mirrors um, of those experiences in their culture, but also windows into um, into other uh, other experiences, other possibilities, other realities. And the Afghan children's book collection addresses um, the, the concept of making a home in a new place. Hessel says the Archdiocese of San Antonio has been working directly with the Afghan community who have resettled into our community and will be helping to hand out those books. We'll have more information on our website. That's KSAT.com. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 91 degrees out there. Lee, have you made it outside yet today? I have made it outside mm -hmm. and instantly started sweating. <laughs> My dog started panting. I have a sunburn from this weekend. Everything is hot. It feels like fire outside. Okay. <laughs> feels, wow. Feels like fire. Uh, I'm going to take that, Lee, and paste that across the seven-day forecast. <laughs> so, hey, here's some news, okay? The aquifer is down three-tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. Saws customers, if you're in San San Antonio, you are still under stage two water restrictions. But starting tomorrow, New Braunfels utility customers are going to be in stage three water restrictions. New Braunfels utility customers. That means one day watering every other week. In San Antonio, there are no plans for saws to enter into stage three water restrictions. In the pollen count, molds are present. They are low, and even Saharan dust is really not a factor. Coming up, we'll talk about our measly chance for rain today and that fiery forecast. Welcome back and happy Monday. So tomorrow is the official start to summer. Yeah. But I got to say, Sarah, I don't know if we're going to expect any changes. No, no, no. In fact, in a cruel twist of fate, tomorrow may be the coolest day of the next seven days. And it will still be at 99 tomorrow. Oh, no. So, yes. <sighs> okay. Let's take a look outside. Right now, we've got 89 degrees. And here's the thing, winds are from the southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. We've still got a decent amount of humidity out there, uh, and so it feels like it's in the low 90s. Brightly cloudy skies around San Antonio at the moment and some thin cirrus clouds. Here's a look at the satellite and temperatures. It's 91 in Del Rio, 94 in Catula, 92 in Pleasanton, 91 in New Braunfels, and 88 in Curl, 89 still in Hondo and in Yavaldi. And as I mentioned, that humidity is still fairly high, and so it feels closer to 100 degrees in areas like Pleasanton, Kennedy, Gonzalez. Feels about 5 degrees warmer than what thermometer reads in many places around there. But here is some good news. We are going to to stay hot today, but the humidity is going to come down in the peak heating hours of the day. So from about 2 p.m. through about 7 p.m., those dew points will be in the upper 50s. So that is some good news there that we are going to be seeing at least very little heat index, if anything, this afternoon when it is the hottest. Something also to keep our, our eyes on this afternoon is like the last couple of days, there could be one or two stray showers between the hours of about 4 p.m. until 8 p.m. 
This is a measly rain chance, okay? Maybe like 10%. That is it. It is, uh, there's a much higher chance that it's not going to rain in your backyard. 102 in Divine, 102 in Poteet for the high temperature this afternoon. It'll be 101 in Seguin and New Braunfels. A little bit uh, less hot out in Bernie where it'll be 96 degrees. Uh, but still, today is going to be likely our 17th 100 degree day in San Antonio so far this year. This afternoon, winds are going to be from the southeast 5 to 15 miles per hour. Right around 4, that's when we'll introduce that wimpy 10% chance. 100 degrees for the high temperature, 5, 6 p.m. And then as the sun sets at 830, temperatures are going to fall into the 80s. So tonight really won't feel all that bad. It will be a warm one with temperatures in the 80s, but, but not all that humid either this evening. Okay, let's take a wide look at the nation. There is a trough of low pressure that is bringing some rainfall across the upper Rockies. Now, you Usually something like this would be really encouraging for us to see, but here's the thing. The heat high is strong and in control. Not only is it hot here in San Antonio because of this heat high, but watch across the nation up toward Minneapolis. High temperatures are going to be hotter than in San Antonio, Texas. These areas up in uh, Minnesota, they usually see a high temperature right near 80 degrees this time of year. So this is much hotter than normal for them and for a good portion of the nation. We're sizzling because of that heat high. It's going to move off to the east a little bit tomorrow, and so that's why we'll shave off a few degrees, uh, but still 99 tomorrow. Then that heat high moves overhead Wednesday, 100, 101 on Thursday, 102 Friday through the weekend because of that big blue bully, that heat high. 10% chance for a pop-up shower. Like we said, summer officially starts tomorrow, but uh, it's been feeling like summer for quite some time. Lee and Max. Yeah, it has. Your, your uh, optimism, measly 10% <laughs> chance there. <laughs> hey, Shining through. <laughs> I know. And coming up in the next half hour, I'm going to take a check of the tropics for you. There we go. Thanks, Sarah. All right. So we know the basketball season is over, but don't worry. We're going to start a whole new one with a couple of new teammates for our Spurs. We're going to go over the draft options and what could happen. Plus, if you're an A&M fan, you are a happy, happy camper today. Beat Longhorn, so we're going to go over the game and what comes next. Welcome back. San Antonio FC finally playing in front of the home crowd at Toyota Field for the first time since late April. But it was the Oakland Roots SC who scored first the 29th minute. SAFC tied it up in the first half thanks to Samuel Adeneran, who actually was recently acquired by San Antonio. But... That would be it for scoring. Even though SAFC outshot Oakland 8-2 in the second half, neither team would find the back of the net again, leading a 1-1 one -one draw. San Antonio's only draw of the season. We were definitely the aggressors with and without the ball. Uh, disappointed. Uh, we didn't get the three points. I felt we earned the three points. I felt we dominated from start to finish. Um, you know, we our pressing actions were fantastic. Uh, Created a number of clear-cut opportunities. Yes, you know we like to execute. Um, you know we'll learn from this. As soon as the, the second half started, from the from the halftime talk, the coach was just telling us that we got to keep pushing, keep keep pressing. You know, not giving them an inch to breathe. So, so yeah, from the from the start of the second half, had no fear, had no worries. But um, sadly, we just couldn't put it away. But hopefully, we can next time. While this is San Antonio's only draw of the season, the Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC, they won their match last night against the Indy 11. So Colorado now holds the first place spot, 33 points. Don't worry though, SSFAFC not too far behind, second place, 31 points. So let's take a look at the info for the long awaited match between the top two teams in the West. SAFC at Colorado, Friday, 8 p.m. All right. From the soccer field to the baseball diamond, the biggest robbery in the Lone Star State, taking center stage in Omaha, College World Series, Texas. Texas A&M, winner stays alive, loser comes home. Longhorns jump out quickly, top of the second, Doug Hodo, the third. Out of Bernie High School, pulls a double left field. Dylan Campbell scores, it is 2-0 Texas, but here's the thing. Wait for it, A&M answering right back. Thanks to another Bernie native. Bernie champion's own Jordan Thompson. Sky's one to the left. That's going to find the gap. Tied at two overall. New batters. Ooh, Trevor Werney driving a base hit left center. Thompson scores. Anum vaults ahead four to two. And that 
is all the run support they would need. Thompson finishing the game two for two, two runs, two RBIs, and the magical season for the Aggies continue, knocking off the horns 10-2. They're staying alive. Collectively, we just put up, put together great at bats. Just kept making him make pitches, and we took the balls and hit the strikes. I mean, nothing more he can do. The story of the game, other than us, is we made pitches to Melendez. I mean, it's first and third, nobody out, and he's up in the, in the first inning. And then I think the next time he's up, or the th third time he's up, the bases are loaded. So you know, it's Golden Spikes winner, and you know we e executed pitches against him, and he's a great hitter, going to have an awesome career. Um, but that was a massive part of the game. We all had the same goal, and that was to you know have a dog pile at the end. It's, I don't think it's really truly hit me yet. We fight for this, and this is everything that we work for, you know, and it's just one of those things that we didn't get it done today, and, you know, we'll be all right. We'll, get, we'll be right back there. I know Coach Pierce will do a great job next year and get us back. All right, so what comes next? A&M taking on Notre Dame in another win or go home game. That is set for tomorrow at 1 p.m. Hey, go Spurs, go. Now the Warriors wrapped up the season with three straight wins over the Celtics. They are now crowned the NBA champion for the fourth time in just eight years. It is now time to look forward to the future. And this week's NBA draft. That's where the Spurs will be armed with three first round picks. We have the 9th, the 20th, and the 25th. Three picks in the first 25. The two, the last two, thanks to trades. The 20th, we traded with Toronto for Thad Young and the 25th from Boston for Derek White on the trade deadline day. But that's not all. Remember, there's two rounds. So take a look at the screen. Second round, we also have the 38th pick. So what could we do with all of these picks? Let's take a look at the possibilities. Jalen Duran, center out of Memphis. Could be good. A lot of people saying we need a big. Just saying. Uh, Eason at LSU, another big guy. And then, of course, Got to load up on guards. Christian Braun out of Kansas. So only time will tell and three days away. So take a look at when the draft is. Draft coverage Thursday, 7 o'clock, Barclays Center in New York. And of course, we'll be live right here on KSAT. Thanks, Max. Well, 20 days since the start of hurricane season, and while we have not seen any major events in Texas this year, several state agencies are preparing for when that time comes. It's why today at 5 we're going to Disaster City and College Station. KSAT photojournalist Bill Caldera shows us the training exercises that under real circumstances could be life-saving. That story today on the News at 5. Well, a major step forward in the fight against COVID-19 with the CDC's approval of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines for children as young as six months old. Families can start vaccinations this week. ABC's Justin Finch in Washington with how parents are reacting. With vaccines for children between six months and five years old now greenlit, shots could start to be administered as early as today. Nearly 20 million children are now able to get vaccinated against COVID-19. States have already begun ordering doses for the more than 18 million American children now eligible to receive it. New York City says it will start distributing the vaccine on Wednesday. The shots come as a relief to parents who have felt the need to isolate their unvaccinated children. We have a four-year-old son and we've been living quite a sheltered life over the last two years um, trying to keep him safe. So this will give us a little bit of breathing room. Octavio and Zena Good chose to enroll their then eight-month-old and their three-year-old in the Pfizer vaccine trial. They say both had no issues with the vaccine. I'd highly encourage all parents to vaccinate their young kids. It's a, a really peace of mind that you don't need to worry about this uh, really uh, potentially dangerous and potentially fatal disease for uh, your young kids. But many parents are in no rush to get their kids the shot. An April survey found that fewer than one in five parents said they are eager to vaccinate their child as soon as the shot became available. We don't feel confident enough at this point to make that decision. We would really like to wait a little while and see what happens. And many parents of children who have recently had COVID are wondering if it's even worth getting the shot. But Pfizer tells ABC News every child should get the shots regardless if they've gotten COVID because it adds extra protection against reinfection as well as serious complications should they get infected again. We have to look at the data. It clearly shows that the benefits far outweigh any risks related to these vaccines. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York.
With the excitement of a long holiday weekend also comes the troubles of travel. Over the weekend, thousands of flights were canceled or delayed. According to TSA, Friday was the most popular air travel day of the year so far. TSA officers screening more than 2,430,000 people at the airport security checkpoints nationwide that day. Delta Airlines pilots say they're being overworked to accommodate this summer travel demand, even as the airline cancels flights. We are not staffed appropriately for this summer flying. We don't have as, um, enough pilots and the company is scheduling more flights than they can fly. Delta says they're canceling about 100 flights daily this summer to try and minimize schedule disruptions. Summer travel not only chaotic, but more costly as inflation hits a 40 year high. Well, back here in the Lone Star State, the Texas Department of Transportation investing in the future of Texas cars. They're planning to add enough electric car charging stations throughout the state to support one million electric cars. They recently released a draft with a five year plan to all make it happen. It says there would be a charging station every 50 miles along major highways. Right now, there's just a little more than 129,000 electric cars throughout our entire state, but they are growing in popularity. Since 2020, the total number of electric vehicles tripled as more Texans come around to the idea. Alrighty, let's go ahead and take another steamy look outside. <laughs> you can just see the heat radiating off the road there. We're set for another, guess it, triple digit day oh. today. And Sarah, yeah. there, that's not uh, coming to an end any time soon. <laughs> well, no, the triple digit tally continues today. One thing I want to take a look at is the aquifer. The aquifer, the lowest it's been since 2015, and it went down three more tenths of a foot uh, over the past 24 hours. And we in San Antonio are under stage two water restrictions. If you're a SAWS customer, you're under stage two water restrictions. SAWS says it's stage three is not going to happen. But if you live in New Braunfels or a New Braunfels utility customer, stage three water restrictions will go into effect for you tomorrow. We've got an article on that on KSAT.com, so check it out if you're a New Braunfels utility uh, customer. Outside right now, you can see that we've got some clouds out there. It's 89 degrees, but it feels like 92 because of higher humidity. The good news is the humidity will come down this afternoon. The bad news is the temperatures are going to go up. We'll be at 100 degrees in San Antonio for the high, 102 in Pleasanton, and 101 in New Braunfels. In the pollen count, we've got molds. Molds are low. This is the time of year for Saharan dust. Coming up, I'll show you the Saharan dust forecast, and we'll take a look at the tropics. Lee, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, today is really the first time Juneteenth has been widely observed with closures of federal agencies, banks, schools, and so much more. The official holiday was yesterday on a Sunday, so the closures are happening today. Last year, Juneteenth had become a federal holiday just two days earlier. The short notice meant many organizations didn't have the time to prepare for it. Today, U.S. Post Office are closed. The New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ do not have active trading hours. Most federal offices and schools are shut down. So is the Federal Reserve along with most banks. This is a day of power. I can think of no better way to observe Juneteenth than being with community. The holiday commemorates when Union Army General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas, announcing enslaved people have been liberated. And no one is happier than Miss Opal Lee about celebrating Juneteenth. Uh, she's been nicknamed the grandmother of Juneteenth and is credited with making it a national holiday. That's right. So really uh, amazing to hear from her and her efforts don't stop there. The 95 year old took a two and a half mile walk for Freedom Saturday in Dallas. Now the distance correlates to the two and a half years it took for slaves in Texas to learn that they were free in 1865. When they they started celebrating and we've been celebrating ever since. Opal Lee delivered 1.5 million signatures to Congress to help make her dream come true. President Joe Biden signed the bill creating the Juneteenth federal holiday one year ago this week. All right, here at home, Tony Parker sharing his talent with San Antonio for years. Now he's sharing his personal collection of Yes, you guessed it, action figures. 
Are you ready for that one? I'm ready. I'm All pumped. right. We're going to give you an inside look at this interesting exhibit. And going inside the ring later on in sports, you won't want to miss that story coming up. All right, and Bill Cosby back in the spotlight and in the courtroom. We're going to go over the latest trial, why it was stalled over the weekend. In the spotlight again today, Bill Cosby, he's in court, finding a lawsuit linked to more sexual misconduct. This specific case was supposed to wrap up this past Friday, but now jury deliberations are picking back up. Judy Huff is suing Cosby for allegedly molesting her at the Playboy Mansion in 1975 when she was only 16 years old. Friday, the Santa Monica jury had reached a verdict on eight of the nine counts against Cosby, but did not answer a question about punitive damages. But the four person of the jury was excused over the weekend, and now they've got to start all over again. An alternate juror will take her place as the jury revisits all nine counts today against Cosby. Well, a celebration of Mexican culture bringing out thousands of people to the Hollywood Bowl over the weekend. The Mariachi Music Festival, known as Mariachi USA, put on its 33rd annual show at the iconic concert venue in Los Angeles, featuring the traditional violin, guitar, trumpet, and vocal music, along with dancers dressed in colorful and decorative mariachi costumes known as chatos. Now, this year, the performances featured a special tribute to the late king of rancheras, Vicente Fernandez. Now, Mariachi USA founder says several factors helped turn this music festival into a huge success over the last 30 years. A lot of heart, a lot of passion, and to be grounded in your beliefs and understand what your purpose is. That's it, and you build it and the people will come, and that's what has happened here at Mariachi USA. We owe our, our success to our artists first and foremost, but to the exceptional community that we have, not just in Los Angeles, but they come from all over the United States. All right, if you build it, they will come. So if you, it sounds like something you'd like to check out, mark your calendars. Uh, she said Mariachi USA will be performing in Austin for the first time this coming September. Well, back here at home, four-time NBA champion Tony Parker, obviously a Spurs superhero on the court, and now he's showing off the court love for Marvel and DC Comics. Yeah, pretty excited for this one. Tony has been collecting life-size superhero and villain statues for more than 10 years. He's now letting the public check out his personal collection at the San Antonio Museum of Art. Our case at News Now crew talked to Tony about this passion, his new heroes and villains exhibit. Take a look. I started with my friends and my brothers, not knowing what to buy <laughs> for my birthday or, or Christmas. I've always been a, a big fan of Marvel, a uh, big fan of DC Comics. My favorite is Iron Man. My favorite statue here is the big Hulkbuster because of the story behind it, because it took 10 of us to, to carry everything and, and to assemble it. I met a company uh, called Oxmoke Studios, you know, based in Australia. They're the one who does all the, the big statues for the big premieres. Built a great relationship with them and I was able to, to purchase uh, those, those statues and started a, a collection. Uh, but it was not a, I didn't do it on purpose, it just happened. I just wanted to create a unique uh, atmosphere at my gym. You know, I have like a half court gym and all the statues, they, they're around it. I don't know, 10 years after I had like 40 of them. <laughs> My kids, they, they, they love it. And so when I told them I was going to send them in the museum, they were like not happy. I was like, don't worry, it's just an exhibit, it's just three months, they're coming back. <laughs> never showed my collection, that's for sure. I never really took pictures of it. And it is art, you know, and when you think about the artist who's doing that at Oxmoke Studios, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I share that, you know, with the people of San Antonio and try to create a unique experience uh, for the city of San Antonio. So the exhibit is open right now through September 4th over at San Antonio Museum of Art, just down the street from KSAT. You can visit their website for tickets and all the details. Who's your favorite? Oh, you got to go with Spider-Man. I was just yeah. telling you, my best friend's little boy mm -hmm. calls him Pita-Man. Oh. And Pita-Man is our favorite. Okay. There you go. Totally noted. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, welcome back. So how did you describe the heat earlier? It's fiery. You mm, walk outside and it's fiery. like your skin starts to melt off. Oh. Um, if you're a woman wearing makeup, that starts to drip off okay. then too. And all the sunburns everywhere. All of them. Yeah, it's okay. true. It is hot outside and it's going to stay hot for the foreseeable future. It 
Summer officially starts tomorrow, even though it's been feeling like summer for quite some time. I want to show you across the state of Texas what's going on right now. Not much. There's a little bit of rain out near El Paso, but generally it's a quiet and hot day across the Lone Star State, all because of this heat high. Let's talk a little bit about the science behind high pressure, shall we? High pressure system compresses the air, makes it hotter. The way you can think about it is, is in a high pressure situation, air warms up quicker. Think about your Instapot. High pressure, hotter temperatures. That's exactly what a heat high does for us here in San Antonio. We often look to the tropics to see any kind of relief in the Pacific Ocean right now. There's tropical depression Celia expected to strengthen and become a hurricane out in the Pacific Ocean by Saturday morning, but that's not affecting our weather in a major way and anything across the Atlantic. Nope, no development expected in the next five days there. So what we're stuck with as far as rain chances go are just a couple of afternoon stray showers today and tomorrow. Chance for rain is only 10%. All right, it's 89 in San Antonio, but it's 95 in Gonzales, 94 in Pleasanton, 94 in Catula, 91 in Del Rio, 86 still in Rock Springs, and 89 in Kerrville. You can see that some cirrus clouds are going to be pushing into Bear County here, but generally it'll be a mostly sunny afternoon, and temperatures are already 95 in Castroville. That 89 feels more like 92, but we are going to be seeing the humidity come down in the afternoon when the temperature reach their hottest. So that is some good news there. We won't really have much of a heat index value. As I said, really only a 10% chance for an afternoon pop up shower both today and tomorrow. And then for the rest of the weekend into the weekend, no rain chances for us. Doesn't look pretty. Here's your future cast. So today we'll be seeing again that one or two spotty showers here or there in the afternoon, but you'll be lucky if you can get some rain in your backyard. 101 in New Braunfels and in Seguin, 101 Port SA area, 100 in Converse, 97 in Lotus, 96 in Bernie. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Again, we'll be near 99 degrees right at about 4 p.m. Looking ahead to the afternoon, 100 degrees, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and in the evening, temperatures aren't going to tumble that quickly, but we will be in the 80s this evening. As for the Saharan dust, promise you a Saharan dust forecast. It's not out there right now. It's not going to be out there tomorrow. Very, very light Wednesday, and just upticking a little bit to the light category on Thursday before it disappears by the weekend. Otherwise, more status quo for us. Temperatures rising to 102 degrees by Friday and Saturday of this weekend. Goodness gracious, it's hot. Even the Saharan dust doesn't want to hang out in San Antonio. No, nope. <laughs> nope. it's too hot here. <laughs> I don't think many people are going to. I think people are going to be okay with that part. I think so. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Ben Rodriguez working to protect the title. We're going to give you a preview and talk about his brother as well. We'll be right back. Yep, you guessed it. It is fight week here in the Alamo City. It's time for Bam Rodriguez to defend his world title. He gets to do it right in front of his hometown crowd live on the zone. So this is the fight of the summer for San Antonio boxing fans. Jesse Bam Rodriguez defending his WBC super flyweight world title against Sri Rakator Rungvisai, a super flyweight from Thailand. He is 50 and 5, 1 and 43 knockouts. Pretty impressive. But we found out recently that this Saturday's fight almost had both Bam and his brother, Joshua Franco, on the same card. It was actually supposed to be a, a card with me and my brother on it, um, but his opponent, Estrada, he, he was just, uh, he was not wanting to fight for some reason. I'm not sure why. So when that happened, they just went through with my fight, and I mean, it was already, already originally planned to be in San Antonio, so they just went ahead and uh, placed it there. You know, we, we were real excited to uh, fight on the same card, you know, especially defending our titles, that would have been, uh, it would have been special for not only us, but for like San Antonio, my family. So when it didn't happen, we, we were disappointed for sure. But I mean, what can we do? It's, it's out of our, it's out of our hands, really. You know, it is special for San Antonio. This will be the first ever major fight in the new Tech Port Center and just opened like a few months ago. So Bam, who is 15-0 with 10 knockouts, he's going to be the headliner in Saturday's DAZN broadcast. Excited to defend his first world title in the brand new state-of-the-art center. 
Uh, Bam had been training out in California the last seven weeks, but is back in the Alamo City today. So the opening fight on the zone broadcast will actually be Lanier High School grad Rick Medina. He turned pro in 2018, undefeated, 13-0, seven knockouts. Saturday's fight will be his first 10-rounder of the career. He's going to be going against New Jersey zone Raymond Ford, a fellow featherweight who is 11-0 and won six knockouts. So Medina telling us on Thursday that his camp has been preparing to face the kind of attack that Southpaws bring to the ring. Training's been great, you know, I got in a lot of rounds of sparring for this training camp. You know, I'm feeling sharp, you know, he's a, my opponent's a southpaw, so we were looking for a lot of southpaws and we, we got good work and I'm, I'm feeling great, you know, the fight was tomorrow, I'd be ready to go, but southpaws, you know, an orthodox to get a lot of headbutts, you know, trying to come in, you know, a lot of fighting with the foot, you know, it's a lot of little things like that, so it, it's going to be very technical. All right, so he's going to be fighting for the WBA Continental America's Featherweight title along with the IBF North American Featherweight title. Good luck to both Bam and Medina on this weekend's fights. Looking forward to it. Let's go ahead and check in with Jen and Fiona at Market Square. It's Monday after Juneteenth, and we have a lot of local businesses that we're featuring on SA Live today. Yes, we check out an authentic Philly cheesesteak food truck on Broadway, Eleanor 1909 Authentic Philly Cheesesteaks. Ooh, I hope you're hungry. Now on to dessert, Galadriel's Goods Berry Cobbler recipe. She's sharing that with us today, and ooh, it's delicious and easy to make. And then how about relaxing with some organically bath and beauty bombs? That's right, this company makes it big and they're local. We're going to tell you how you can find their bath bombs now at Target. Oh, their lavender one is my favorite, by the way. And Jada Rashawn is here, one of our go-to local nannies. She has some nature crafts that you can do with your kids and it's inexpensive fun. And it's a barbecue spot with some family history on San Antonio's east side. We're going to tell you the story of Barbecue Life by Chris, how they got started, and what's on the menu. Mm. I hope you're hungry, and if you're not, you will be, right? <laughs> yes. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. Well, I know it already feels like it, but tomorrow marks the first official day of summer, and the San Antonio Zoo is kicking off with a hot deal for mm. a limited time. You can get a kid's ticket for free with the purchase of an adult ticket. And there's a lot of new attractions out at the zoo, a 40 theater, new food options, or as I say, culinary options. Head to KSAT.com for all the details on how to take advantage of the new deal. I think we're all going to have to cool off like that hippo right there. Like bowls you know. right there. Scorching hot out there, Sarah. <laughs> it is. And yeah, you're right. Summer does officially start tomorrow at 413 in the morning with the summer solstice. But Weirdly, tomorrow could be our quote unquote coolest day over the next seven days. We'll be at 99 for the high temperature tomorrow. Both today and tomorrow, we have a chance for a stray shower in the afternoon, but generally very little to no chance for rain over the next seven to 10 days. Certainly no chance for healthy rains. All right. Yeah. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. SA Live starts right now. Brisket, burgers and ribs, a barbecue spot on the east side where everything is fresh off the pit. There's nothing like berry cobbler in the summer. It's an easy recipe you can make for your family. And a local business now featured on store shelves at Target. The bath bomb that made it big. It's all today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Good afternoon and happy Monday. I'm Fiona Gorostiza. I'm Jen Tobias Jeske. Yesterday was Juneteenth, now a federal holiday to celebrate the emancipation of slavery. One way to celebrate is to support local black owned businesses, and we are featuring a lot of those today on the yes. show. Our first stop an authentic Philly cheesesteak food truck on Broadway. Check it out. Oh yes, we love food on the show. We know you love food too, so we want to put the spotlight on a local food truck that's serving authentic Philly cheesesteaks right here in the Alamo City. Yes, and some of the family recipes go decades back. Bree Morris, the Hi. chef and owner of Eleanor 1909 <laughs> Cheesesteaks, is here. Welcome. We're so happy you're here. Thank yes. you. Thank you for being cheesesteak stalkers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it smells amazing yeah. already. Okay, what kind of Phillies are we making? So today, you guys are making two traditional South Philly style cheesesteaks. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have Jen 
She has a bechamel sauce that is my great grandmother's recipe, and she's gonna throw some extra sharp cheddar in there. All of this scoop? Okay. You can put as much cheese as well, you until cheese. your heart is content. <laughs> or actually, oh, you can God. just ask. <laughs> If it's me, Jen, I'm pouring that. I mean, water. I'm all about yeah. the cheese. So you're gonna put that cheese in and you're gonna stir. Oh, yeah, have to, why not? Yes. Do it. Okay. Let that people OD. <laughs> well, and this recipe is your great grandmother's? Yeah. Tell is, me about that. It is. So uh, Eleanor Marsh, she was from Buena Vista, Mississippi. Um, she had two children, my grandmother Charlene and my great aunt Rosie, um, and my mother Kim, mm -hmm. <laughs> who, who can't cook, but they can cook. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, these are recipes I've taken um, and I've moved around, and I just like to serve the purest form of things. Mm -hmm. um, going to my school, going to Johnson Wells University, just using certain basics. Mm -hmm. um, so that I can give San Antonians a real local experience. Um, you're going to actually be putting in onions if you decide, yes. if you love onions. Yes. So go on ahead, I do. go crazy with it. I shall. <laughs> okay, I'll you already have some thinly sliced meat cooking. You're gonna actually, I, I know, okay, yes. I know. <laughs> mm, you can spread that out yeah, amongst the meat yeah, and it's can. still, that, that's a good ratio for me. It is, it really is. <laughs> and what you're gonna do, you're gonna put a little bit of some oil and water in there so we can get that going. Oh, there you go. Okay, perfect. A little bit of seasoning that Jen has. Here you go. Oh, yes, it's had. Okay. And I make that, it's one of my favorites, but I can't call them out because yep. they didn't pay me for it. <laughs> but, <laughs> and you're gonna take that spatula and you're just gonna flip that in. I like my onions and meat to be nice in there. Let me help She's gonna you help. out. I gonna use and those. I'm used to it, yeah. so nothing burns Yum. me. You oh yeah. You mentioned favorites now. You take pride in remembering your customers, I right? Do. You come back. I do. I love. <laughs> Some of the greatest repeat offenders ever. <laughs> there's Drew, there's Eddie, there's Tim. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got Mr. and Mrs. Nelson. Oh. I have like, all yes. these rolling, all these different You're people. Regulars. Yeah, they're regulars, and when I see them, like I'm, I know what they want or I know what they're getting. So I take pride in that because I like people to know that I remember you and I yes. appreciate you. Yes. And there are different types of fillies for folks who they may are. not know, right? Yes. So uh, back in Philly, in West Philly, there's actually a really large uh, Muslim community. So there are, uh, you're going to find a lot of popular chicken cheese steaks mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the best, actually, you'll have. And South Philly, that's where you're finding, you know, people are talking about Pats and uh -huh. <laughs> Tony Luke's and Gems, and people are gonna wanna do the cheese whiz. Or and, they're gonna wanna this, go fresh. Yes. Is that this one traditional? Yes. Okay, yes. I'm gonna go, add some and cheese. And look at that. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Loaded up. Loaded That's up. beautiful. That is food. Great form. grandma's recipe, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, look at this. And juice. then you're gonna put some cheese. Yes. Yeah, your cheese. cheese. And you have some sharp provolone, so you're gonna put that all over. All over it. Yes, you want that to get nice and melted. And sharp provolone is pungent. Um, it normally takes a certain per you know, people to actually get it because it has an acquired taste. Yeah. <laughs> well, but you love yeah, cheese. I, well, I love <laughs> cheese. Well, yeah, I mean, the more punch in the cheese yeah. for me, I mean, the better it tastes, okay? <laughs> so that's perfect. And, oh, look at that. And yeah. where can people find you? People can actually find me at the Growler Exchange these days. I'll be there today from 5 to 9. Um, and then I have a couple of pop-ups happening uh, through Eleanor's child Eleanor Rogue Cheese um, and we're gonna actually be doing a homage to things um, in their simplest forms. Okay. Um, so giving those experiences. Okay and so you have of course cheese steaks yes. but for vegans you have a secret the, option the that is the cheese fake. The cheese <laughs> fake. Oh, really? Okay. I do. So I'm gonna give you some bread so you can put this okay. in there. So the cheese fake is actually all of the veggies, all the toppings, all my toppings are fresh. So it's all the toppings in the bread. You can get it with or without cheese. So you can make it vegan, 
or you can make it vegetarian. We try our best on the truck to make sure we're cooking on my grill that I use the least or there hasn't been any meat and we clean it very well. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, uh, I use Rob, I do spinach, I do roasted peppers. A lot of the times I'll suggest you do provolone or I've actually had one of my um, customers tea. Uh, she brought her own vegan cheese for me to put in there. <laughs> so like whatever you want, you want, I'm just one of those people, whatever you want, yes. I'll make it for you. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. You know, I want to Because that is the that movement experience. now, a lot more it vegans, is. right? So yeah. you have the options for everybody. I love it. Just remember, I, yes. I, I cook meat, but yes. I'll make yes. it for you. Yes. Oh, that is awesome. And, oh, and your dream beautiful. for the business overall? My dream for the business eventually is, is to have a brick and mortar, of yes. course. Yes. Um, something super small oh. and then ex you know, expand it a little bit because mm -hmm. there's definitely a lot more to offer. All right. Well, thank you so much, oh, Fiona. That looks amazing. I know, right? Good that job. That's wow. hot off the press right I, I there. Actually, okay. yeah, you did a really good job. I'm higher <laughs> as you would. <laughs> you can moonlight if you like. All right. Well, thank you so much. For more information on Eleanor 1909 cheesesteaks, just head to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we provided a link or just scan that QR code on your screen. Well, after that cheesesteak, how about some dessert? Our next guest is an Air Force veteran turned baker, and she's sharing one of her recipes today. Yes, it's an easy berry cobbler for summer, and Alexis with the Galadriel's Goods shows us how to make it. Hello, I am Alexis Galadriel of Galadriel's Goods, and today I'm going to be making for you a summertime dessert, something that's cool, light, and mostly everybody loves. We're gonna do a summer berry cobbler. So if you're looking for something that's, you know, kind of light, refreshing, and something that screams summer, something you can take to the cookouts, the barbecues, the celebrations, the pool parties, whatever, this is the perfect dessert, okay? And you don't have to feel overly guilty because plenty of fruit in it. The berries that I've chosen to make this cobbler with are blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and strawberries. All together, you want about eight cups of fruit. Already looks refreshing. Next, you always, well, anytime I make a cobbler or pie, anything dealing with fruit, I always add a little bit of lemon juice. And you wanna put a, about one teaspoon of lemon juice. Just spray. So you also wanna take a half teaspoon of vanilla. Um, my favorite vanilla, you can use any vanilla you want to, but I'm just gonna tell you now, more than likely if you have one of my desserts, I'm using Mexican vanilla, it's my favorite. I like a little spice in my fruit desserts. Um, fruit has flavor all on its own and you, this is totally optional. A lot of people don't really add anything beyond sugar to their fruit desserts. I like to add a little spice. I think it makes it very nice. So we're gonna put one fourth a teaspoon of cinnamon and just wait till you see what it adds to it. It's gonna be yummy. And just a pinch of nutmeg. You do not want to overdo it on the nutmeg, just a pinch. Cornstarch because it's gonna help the fruit thicken. You know, a cobbler, you don't want watery cobbler. You know? It's gonna thicken it up a little bit. And of course, because sometimes berries can be bitter and be a little sour and everything, you wanna make sure you're getting, you know, some sweetness in this. So we're gonna use fourth a cup of sugar. You don't really need too much because between the all the different berries, you're gonna get plenty of sweetness. So once you have everything um, sprinkled over the fruit, next take your spatula and just lightly coat it. Now you don't wanna to be too heavy handed while you're stirring everything because some of the berries will just fall apart. So once you got that covered, and like I said, you can tell everything's nice. All right, so we're gonna put that to the side. Again, my favorite uh, spray is Baker's Joy, and this is how you prep your can. Your pan, just spray it, give it a good coating because you don't want anything sticking. Once you got your your pan already sprayed with your Baker's Joy or whatever non-coating, non-stick coating, then you want to get your berries and just pour them in there. Now 
now I go and I scrape the bowl <laughs> to get all the yumminess. Now, sometimes I do like a crust crust or sometimes I do something of a biscuit crust. Now in my family, as my mother will tell you, the crust is everything. Um, we don't do minimal crust. We like a lot of crust with our cobblers. So you can use however much you want. Some people like to only use a little bit so you can see the fruit once it bakes inside. But you know what? It's your party. <laughs> For the crust, I start out with two cups of flour. Then I add a half teaspoon of salt. I use a fourth teaspoon of baking soda. And then I use one and one half spoon, teaspoons of baking powder. About six tablespoons to half a cup of butter. So cut it up into cubes, that's gonna make this easier. And you wanna make sure it's cold. So the final part to this crust, you're gonna get a half cup of buttermilk because this is a buttermilk crusted berry cobbler, honey. And in the South, buttermilk, anything bread and buttermilk, that's, that's what you want. <laughs> so it's guaranteed to be good. Flatten it out like a little pancake or something. And then you just place it on top of the berries. But when you have like these summer berries, it's so pretty. I like food that tastes great and looks as good as it tastes. Cause let's be honest, sometimes if we see it before we eat it, we may not eat it, so. All right, and there you have it. Look at that. I hope you've enjoyed making berry, summer berry cobbler with me today. If you wanna see more of my work and just enjoy all that you see and have any requests, you can find me on Facebook under Galadriel's Goods and you can find me on Instagram. Still ahead, fire up your appetite. We're taking you to an east side barbecue joint filled with flavor and family history. And up next, these bath bombs made it big. We catch up with those local bath bomb makers who, whose products are now at Target. Keep it here on SA Live.